In this lecture, my goal will be to explain to you what electric potential energy is. Now I'm going to use a more common example of potential energy, known as that gravitational potential energy, to explain this concept. So if you're not familiar with what gravitational potential energy is, check out my other lecture on gravitational potential energy. Now let's begin. Let's first review what the gravitational law tells us about two masses. What it tells us is the following. If we have mass 1, m1, and mass 2, m2, and they're separated by a distance t, that means that to find the force that each mass experiences due to the other mass, we use the following equation known as the gravitational law. So the force is equal to our constant g, called the gravitational constant, times our mass 1, times our mass 2, divided by the distance between them squared where this red line simply signifies that this uh, force is in fact a vector. Now, I want to ask the question, what is the gravitational field of our Earth? Now, we are just spoke about what the electric field is and how electric field and charge is related. Now, I want to ask the question, how mass and the gravitational field are related. So, let's look at my Earth. Suppose that this blue line, this blue dashed line, represents the surface of my Earth. And inside my Earth, my mass is distributed uniformly, so it's uniformly distributed mass. That means I could make the assumption that my Earth is a point mass. The same way we spoke about point charges, we can speak about point masses. So this is my point mass. And now if I place an object on the surface of my Earth, this object will experience a force, this guy, that's related to the distance that's separating this object and my point mass, my point Earth. And this distance is simply the radius of my Earth. So in other words, now I want to find the gravitational field using this picture. When we spoke about point charges, instead of the masses, we had point charges. And we simply plugged the guys into our formula and found our electric field. Now we're going to do the same exact thing. Remember, electric field is given by the force divided by our charge. Now to find the gravitational field, we're going to take our force and divide it by the mass. So we're dividing by the mass of this guy, the same way that we divided by the charge of this guy when we spoke about charges. So let's take our force, this force, force due to gravity, divided by the mass of the object found on the surface of my Earth, a distance r away from that point, uh, point mass, point mass of the Earth, equals this whole guy, so I plug this guy into my top and simply leave the bottom, so the, this guy will cancel out, and I'll simply get that my gravitational field is equal to g times mass of Earth divided by distance squared, so radius squared. Now, I know what my radius is, I know what my mass of Earth is, and I know what my constant is. I can look that up, I can look that up in any textbook and, in, and online. So I look them up. I plug them in. My constant is 6 times 6, 7, 3 times 10 to the negative 11, the units, times 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms for my Earth. And I have to use kilograms because this constant has kilograms on the bottom. And then I have to use meters for my radius. So I find that it's 6,778,100 meters is my radius. Square that. And I find that my electric field on the surface of the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. And what is this number? This is simply the gravitational constant. So now we see that all along, whenever we dealt with the gravitational constant, we were actually dealing with our gravitational field on the surface of the Earth. So this is simply an equal potential line which simply means that our electric field on the surface, or the gravitational field on the surface, is exactly the same. And all along, when we dealt with this guy, we actually dealt with our gravitational field. So, and what did we use our gravitational field for? Well, remember, 
force equals mass times acceleration. And to find the mass, or to find the force, we simply said force equals mg, right? To find the weight of an object. We simply said force equals mg. And the g was our electric or gravitational field. So, force of gravity is equal to mass of that object times our electric field, and we just found our electric field to be our g, so these guys are the same. So, if we apply the same concept to electric fields, and we multiply our electric field, not by mass, but by charge, we get that our force due to the electric field is equal to the charge times our electric field. And now we can talk about electric potential energy and we can relate electric potential energy to gravitational potential energy. So now in order to find the electric potential energy, we're going to follow the following steps. First we're going to find the gravitational potential energy and then we're going to follow the same exact steps that we took to get our gravitational potential energy and find the electric potential energy. So let's go to this side. So here's our surface of our Earth, and at this point our potential energy is zero, right? And we found that the gravitational field at this equal potential line at the Earth's surface is simply our g, 9.8 meters per second second. So to find the energy required to move an object a height h above the surface of the Earth, we simply take our force due to gravity and multiply it by the distance it travels. So force times distance or force times height equals <coughs> m times g is simply the force. We saw that, right? Force equals our mass times our gravitational field g. And that gives us this equivalent uh, form and that's simply the energy or potential energy of our object this guy, object with mass m. So now let's follow the same exact steps and find the electric potential energy or the energy due to electrostatic forces. So suppose we have a positive force q1 and a negative force q2 separated by distance t. Let's look at the relationship here. Notice that if I drop this ball, if I drop this mass, it will fly down to the earth because the earth pulls on it. In the same way that if I keep my mass, if I keep my um, positive charge stationary and let go of this negative charge, it will fly down to my positive charge according to Coulomb's law. In the same way that this mass will fly down to this guy if we keep our uh, Earth stationary. So, let's follow the same exact procedure. Force times distance between them, that's the energy. So, this guy equals, well, distance remains distance, but what is force? Well, force is simply the electric field produced by this stationary charge multiplied by this charge Q2. But what is electric field? Well, electric field of this charge depends strictly on this charge and not on this charge, because remember, to find the electric field, we take our force and divide it by this charge. So electric field is simply K constant times Q1 divided by D2 squared. And this comes from Coulomb's law. So now we simplify by simply uh, crossing out the Ds. And let's rewrite Ds as the R. And combine these guys and we get Q1 times Q2 times K divided by R. And this has the units of joules because we have force times distance. So this is my electric potential energy or the potential energy stored due to electrostatic forces.